I am sorry. I'm sorry for the, for the pain you live in and think you cannot share. I'm sorry for the loss you're going through and the aloneness sometimes feel. I'm sorry if you've forgotten how amazingly spectacularly beautiful you are and how dear you are to this world. I'm sorry it hurts and that it hurt. The memory of when you were left out, not invited or told you didn't belong. I understand because I too have lived in separation, pain, and fear of others finding out the whole of who I truly am. Because I too have had things happen that made it difficult to feel safe, included, and loved just as I am. Because I too thought the answer was to leave parts of myself behind, outside of the door, hidden even from myself. I too am human. We all come into this world beautiful, beautiful, and desired by life, or we wouldn't be here. You are not an accident, and neither am I, nor is anyone else around you, inside these walls and beyond. We live our lives as though it is a single story, and indeed it is. However, it's also so much more. Our lives are a multiplicity of stories woven together, feeding into one another. Our stories are made up of our experiences and those of our ancestors and the culture and time we live in. Our stories carry memories is encoded in our DNA and family patterns. Our stories intersect with the stories of our neighbors and friends and people we will never know, but who harvested the food that we ate for dinner last night. We like to imagine we are special, unique, and set apart, and we are. We are also no different than every other per person and particle of this universe. We are made of atoms and stardust. We repeat the same patterns of life, death, and renewal. Each of us living universal storylines time and again. Many of us were not told that we are part of the cosmos. Spectacular, magnificent, one of a kind, while also ordinary, average, and more alike than different from other expressions of life. Most of us were taught to look at the world through a binary lens. We weren't taught about wholeness and the irony, paradoxes, and seemingly contradictions that life contains. We were taught that things were either good or bad, right or wrong, and people fell into that same category. There were things about ourselves to be illumined and things to be forgotten. Unity is our ministry theme for this year. How do we begin discussing the ideas of unity? Where do we dive into it? Well, within ourselves. So let me take a moment to remind us of how we got to this year's ministry theme. The first year that I was here, our annual ministry theme was story. It happened organically. It actually wasn't planned. One of my very first sermons focused on the power of stories, and it stuck. We kept returning to it over and again the first few months I was here, and before long, one of you said to me, story, it's like our theme this year, and it stuck. So it began. 
My second year, our theme was journey. The power of our individual stories had begun co-mingling and creating our collective story, our journey. And imagination seemed only fitting for the theme as we entered our third year together with COVID in full swing. Acknowledging and living into realities of COVID required us to imagine things anew whether we wanted to or not. The events that took place over last church year felt at times beyond our wildest imagination. The realities of rising divisions and increasing political tensions played out in the national election, the attack on our capital, and the vaccine and mask debacle, among other things. And I began hearing common refrains from parishioners. You said to me, help me understand how to talk with my friends and family who think and vote so differently from me. I've lost friends. I'm losing hope. I have no hope. It was clear that unity had to be our theme this, this year. Unity doesn't mean conformity or unanimity, or that we can or will or even should think alike. Difference is essential to wisdom. Unity, as I am, I am using this term, simply means wholeness. Wholeness wherein there is space and room for all, including all of ourselves and all of our differences. This does not mean that we accept injustice as inevitable or accept harm that is being done to ourselves or other people. It does mean, however, that we can seek understanding. I invite us not to lose the goodness and the growth that can come from exploring such a seminal concept as unity by looking for the loopholes. I believe that much, much good can come of this exploration, even as we will not come to total answers. Over the year ahead, we'll look at unity through the role of dialogue, world religions, our own Unitarian Universalist faith. We'll delve into unity in the spheres of cosmology and relationships and social justice. We'll look into the phenomena of paradox, contradiction, uncertainty, all of which are foundational to unity, and explore the role of spaciousness, tending, and awakening as they relate to wholeness and unity. We'll apply the question concepts of unity to ourselves, this congregation, and the larger world, just as we approached our values, mission, and ends, looking within, among, and beyond ourselves. We will be disappointed if we expect neat, packaged, easy answers. There are none. However, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't do our very best to dig deep and seek further understanding. And of course, it will not be the only thing that we reflect upon or spend our Sundays doing together. It will be the theme that will weave through the year. So let's start with you. Let's start with you, your stories and life experiences. What better place to begin searching for unity than within ourselves? None of us live in a state of unity or wholeness all the time. We wouldn't be human. We all have parts of ourselves and our experiences that we would rather stay hidden, suppressed, or in the shadows. Imagine your life as a book. I'm serious with this invitation. Imagine, even close your eyes if you want, imagine your life as a book. Take this book off shelf. What do you see? What color is its cover, if it has one? Is it hardcover? or paperback. 
thick or slim? Does it have dusty or, or glossy paper? Did you take it down from high up on a shelf? Or did you need to round a corner to find it tucked away in the eaves? Mine is hardcover, rather old, a faded navy blue. Its pages are cream-colored, thickish paper and a bit dusty. What do you find when you open your book? Are there pages turned down from where, in indicating places and stories and memories you return to time and again, for better or for worse? Are there pages folded in on themselves in hopes of not being noticed? Do some pages have darker ink than others? The dark ink seeming to shout, look at this, of which I am so proud. And the faded ink symbolizing your regrets, trying to disappear. This is your book, my friends. Everything belongs. Everything. There is not a thing in your story that hasn't played an important part in your becoming who you are today. Not a one. Fred Allen Wolf, in his book, The Little Book of Big Ideas Where Science Meets Spirit, writes this Within your own mind and body lies a majestic story filled with drama, pathos, humor intelligence, fantasy, and fact. It is no less than the story of the entire universe, particularly its own creation, transformation, and ultimate purpose. Yet, so often we hide parts of ourselves, which leaves us feeling less secure, concerned about how to keep those things hidden. And it cuts us off from, from the love that holds us. In such disowning of parts of ourselves, we can lose connection with our souls, our innate, beautiful essence. The Gospel of Mark says, what is good for a man, but I'm going to say it, what is good for a person what good is it, rather, what good is it for a person to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Anyway, often it is our foibles, big and small, that allow others to love us. We are loved in the sharing of our pain and errors, and yet we believe otherwise. I receive more responses from sermons in which I talk about my challenges, or my flaws, if you will, than my successes, hands down. People will share with me how relieved they are to know they're not alone. And then they often want to know, how did I do it? Whatever it is that we may be discussing. How did I overcome addiction? How did I become brave enough to use my experiences of sexual abuse to speak out against su such an atrocity. How can I be so vulnerable publicly? I do it because living in hiding left me dying inside. And it also left me believing and perpetuating societal lies about perfection, good and bad, patriarchy, and so many other things that I could say. And I do it because it is impossible for me to live in authentic connection and hide parts of who I am. Yet I am still human. I still hide things I fear I will be judged for or told I don't belong. My two divorces, for example, or the centrality of my Christian mysticism and my personal theology of love. 
What if these things deem me unworthy? I worry. And there, I just did it. I just shined the spotlight on two parts of my story that I often try to hide. I asked someone, do you think people know these things? And they thought, and they said, well, if they're paying attention, they probably do. <laughs> and a dear elder in my life, when I was leaving Brookline, where I served for years before here, she asked me if you all knew about my theology. And I said, no, not necessarily. And she looked at me and she was in her late 80s at the time. And she said, oh, that's a problem. <laughs> I didn't like that answer, sir. But my friends, what we hide out of fear, out of shame, it rules us. I'm not suggesting that we, that we tell our whole story to everyone we meet or anyone who asks. I am suggesting that to hide parts of ourselves because we think it makes us un unworthy, unlovable, anything less than beautiful is unkind, if not cruel to ourselves. And the truth is it often takes away some of our most important gifts we can offer this world. Our stories are ours to share when and with whom we choose. We will share them at varying degrees and in chosen relationships. I just pray that we all have some people who do know it all, every nook and cranny of your story. At what expense does hiding the parts of our stories and ourselves, particularly due to shame, occur. It is a huge cost, I promise you. We are so much freer to serve the world and to live fully, authentically, and joyfully when we accept all of who we are and all parts of our stories. Carl Jung said, people will do anything, no matter how absurd, in order to avoid facing their own soul. May we welcome each other's souls, their beautiful essence, and may this be a refuge for all, exactly and wholly as we are. Amen.